Wait a minute, has the GPU spec of the PlayStation 5 and perhaps even Xbox Series X really been leaked? And potentially from an AMD source? Man, this leaking game has certainly moved on. Back in 2012, it was all about hacked documents that were illegitimately liberated from the platform holders, but this time around, key information has emerged seemingly from AMD's testing labs. Last April, we saw the Gonzalo leak, where intrepid amateur analysts reversed engineered the 3D Mark benchmark database, revealing the existence of a Zen 2 Navi based processor that was almost certainly work in progress Sony Silicon. But now, further leaks over the last few days not only back up the old Gonzalo story, but also deliver a remarkably rounded specification for what is almost certainly the PlayStation 5 graphics core. Adding further spice to this already highly unlikely tale, the leak also contains hints about the technical makeup of the Xbox Series X GPU as well, and there are some big surprises there. Now the scale and scope of this latest leak is remarkable, and its origins are perhaps even more unbelievable than the Gonzalo story leading many to believe that the entire thing may be a work of fiction. However, having looked into the situation myself and independently verified the source, the overwhelming evidence does seem to be that the data comes from AMD and hasn't been doctored. We're lacking context for sure, but the reasons to doubt this leak are somewhat thin on the ground. But before we go on, let's just step back a moment and remind ourselves that we're not system architects. We're not GPU hardware specialists, and while some of the data seems easy enough to fathom, let's not kid ourselves here. We're outsiders looking in, and the scope for errors in interpretation can never be discounted. But pressing on, from what I can gather, someone who may work for AMD's ASIC validation department used GitHub to store fragments of internal testing data from a range of work-in-progress Team Red projects, including its next-generation desktop and mobile PC APUs, along with some deep-dive testing on the PlayStation 5 chip, which now seems to have the codename of Oberon. The further details from the leak that I'm talking about here are being discussed on Resetera, and again, I've independently confirmed the details there as coming from the same source. Looking back over Twitter timelines from noted leakers, I've every reason to suspect that the source here may even have been in circulation for several months. Now, my understanding is that this data was stored on GitHub around six to seven months ago. While this may suggest that the testing is perhaps out of date, it's important to remember that when developing a microprocessor of the complexity we're talking about here, well, this is a multi-year effort. Testing and validating a chip to ensure that it meets performance targets and that it passes debugging. Well, all of this is a really lengthy process and it's likely that making changes to the architecture of the chip at this point is basically impossible without introducing a massive delay and a huge cost penalty. Now, tweaks to clock speeds or accompanying memory are a possibility. And we saw something along those lines with uh, the original Xbox One. But the timeline we have here suggests that Sony already took the decision to push clock speeds higher by the time the leaked testing took place. The Gonzalo leak back in April suggested a PlayStation 5 chip that featured a Zen 2 CPU cluster running at 3.2 GHz paired with a Navi graphics core at 1.8 GHz. Slightly less concrete evidence linked to PCI Express identifiers suggested that AMD was referring to the GPU component as Navi 10 Lite, inferring heavily that the graphics setup would have the same 40 compute units as the PC-based Navi 10 part we find in the RX 5700 series, though there would likely be four compute units disabled for improved yields from the production line. The test leaks that have emerged in recent days tell us nothing new, nothing at all in fact, about the CPU side of the equation, but they do confirm 
36 available compute units running at 2.0 gigahertz, which would give us a 9.2 teraflop GPU for PlayStation 5. Now at this point, it would be remiss of me not to point out that performance from a Navi teraflop is much, much improved over older generation GCN equivalents. I'm not gonna go into that again, but there are links about it in the video description below. Moving on, the leak also suggests that PlayStation 5 uses GDDR6 memory, the same as RX 5700. Uh, rated bandwidth, 448 gigabytes per second, um, but there are some select tests that perhaps indicate that it's as high as 512 gigabytes per second. This may indicate that 14 gigabits per second GDDR6 is upgraded to 16 gigabits per second on the same 256-bit interface. Or it may simply be the case that performance was improved on a specific internal cache. It's not really clear there. An upgrade to what is currently premium level G6 memory may well be beyond the scope of PlayStation 5's balance between price and performance, which is crucial. But let's not rule anything out, and uh, it's not as if Sony hasn't upgraded memory in the past. PlayStation 4's reveal of 8 gigs of GDDR5 was a seriously big deal back at the 2013 PlayStation meeting. Right, so let's try to sanity check this leak. First of all, how can we be confident that this processor is actually a semi-custom AMD product for Sony and not for another partner like Microsoft? Well, that's down to the vast range of back compat tests that AMD undertakes. While a 2.0 GHz GPU clock is used for what is described as the fully unlocked native or Gen 2 mode, the processor is also tested in what is referred to as Gen 1 and Gen 0 modes. Gen 1 then, 36 compute units, 911 MHz core clock, 218 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, 64 ops, Yup, the exact specifications for PS4 Pro. Gen 0 cuts the CUs and ROP counts in half, 800 MHz core clock there. It's a match for the base PlayStation 4. In effect, Sony and AMD appear to have developed a hardware solution for backwards compatibility, certainly for the GPU, and in turn raises some interesting questions about the makeup of the Navi architecture and the extent to which older GCN compatibility may be baked into the design something AMD has mentioned nothing about so far. Now, if the leak is remarkably specific about PlayStation 5's basic GPU spec, where does this leave Xbox Series X? As we understand it, the documents consist of select fragments from a much larger data set. There's mention of a processor referred to as Arden, which sounds like a very good match for Series X silicon. However, there is nowhere near as much testing done on this or the data simply isn't up to date enough to include validation testing of any note. Alternatively, it may simply be the case that the Sony and Microsoft semi-custom designs may be tested in a different way or with a different set of criteria. Right, so in reaction to the leak, there has been an argument suggesting that the PS5 specs that they reveal should be treated with suspicion because there's no mention of features such as hardware accelerated ray tracing, which Arden definitely has confirmed. However, as I said, the documentation for both processors is seemingly very different according to my understanding. There's little consistency between the data that's being presented for both projects. A lot of AMD's PS5 validation testing is in the leak, whereas the Series X data, um, well, it's been described to me as somewhat patchy by comparison. And so with that in mind, if the PS5 specs are to be taken with a pinch of salt, have an armful of the stuff ready when looking at what could be Series X spec leaks. So with all of those caveats in place, the sparse data apparently includes mention of 3,584 shaders, which would translate to a frankly ginormous Series X processor with 56 active compute units. Uh, apparently no sign of clock speeds in this data, but if we assume that 12 teraflops is the target, 1680 megahertz gives you 12 teraflops on the nose with a nice round 1700 megahertz delivering 12.2 teraflops. If Microsoft was aiming for lower than 12, the shader count would be much lower and the silicon itself significantly cheaper to produce. I would suspect we'd see a solution much closer to the leaked PlayStation 5 configuration. 
Beyond that, not much else is revealed. The AMD leak does seem to confirm memory bandwidth at 560 gigabytes per second. And that's a curious figure, especially if we return to the Project Scarlet reveal teaser at E3, which seemed to show both 1GB and 2GB G6 modules in play. So, entirely speculation, but maybe we're looking at a hybrid memory interface with some modules using a 256-bit interface, others at 64-bit. Uh, something of a mystery here, which I hope to see cleared up in the fullness of time. On the face of it, the latest leak confirms a number of spec points uh, but infers several more. To begin with, it's clear that Microsoft designed Series X to push the limits of console design beyond the established norms in the pursuit of maximum performance. Now, if the 56 compute unit makeup of the processor is eventually confirmed, the cost implication is eye-opening to say the least. Based on what we've seen from the RX 5700 series, adding 50% to the shader count and adding in an 8-core Zen 2 CPU cluster on top of that, along with stuff like the display controller, audio processor and media engine, well, this suggests a processor that's far larger than I expected. This leak suggests that Series X is even more of a beast than previously imagined, but you've got to ask the question, THE question, just how expensive is this monster going to be? Meanwhile, the PlayStation 5 spec outlined in the leak points towards a device with more of a balance between price and performance. Assuming we're looking at 16 gigs of GDDR6 and a 1TB SSD, we're still looking at a pricey machine in terms of uh, bill of materials, build cost. But stacked up against the monstrous Series X, it stands much more of a chance of hitting that magic $400 launch price point that served PlayStation 4 and PS4 Pro so well. The specs suggest that Microsoft has the more powerful machine, but some might say that in the console space, the price point is of paramount importance. Personally, I'm happy to see variation in hardware choices with the next generation machines. The more choice there is for the user, the better, but you know, that's just my opinion. But perhaps now isn't the time for drawing conclusions, and I'm acutely aware that these specs scream out for context. I'm still mindful of a conversation I had with uh, PS4 system architect Mark Cerny prior to the launch of the PlayStation 4 Pro. He stressed the importance of customization in processor design. And while there are indications and givens we can take from existing PC Navi hardware, in assessing these leaks, Cerny and his team at Sony would have been buoyed by the successes of the Pro's more modest design and certainly mindful of its weaknesses. And straight comparisons with existing Navi PC hardware can only go so far. The fact that hardware accelerated ray tracing is confirmed for PS5 also demonstrates clearly that Sony has had the same access to future AMD roadmap features that it had with PlayStation 4. None of those features are the focus for testing in the leaked documents, as far as I'm aware. But that doesn't mean that they're not baked into the silicon, particularly when you've got Mark Cerny saying that they are. It's also worth re-emphasizing that the leak is sparse on concrete details in terms of the next-gen Xbox. There are hints about the two processor designs for the Lockhart and Anaconda boxes, but nothing massively conclusive about what the differences are between them. In fact, there are absolutely no details whatsoever for the cheaper Lockhart box. And as far as I'm aware, Microsoft's next-gen entry-level machine is still in development. I don't think it's been cancelled. In fact, what little we can glean from Series X from this leak suggests a top-end premium-priced console that practically demands some kind of cheaper mass-market stablemate. But again, just speculation on my part. Apart from a Sparkman code name, the leak really gives us nothing at all about Lockhart. Overall then, this latest next-gen leak is fascinating and potentially fills in some blanks, but it's definitely limited in scope. The Xbox data raises more questions than it answers in several respects, and while the PS5 data is much more comprehensive, the bottom line is that all that we really have is more of a, a block diagram of one component of the processor bolstered by assumptions from PC-based Navi parts in a world where the current gen consoles have delivered results way beyond Radeon equivalent parts. What we do know for sure is that both machines are targeting holiday 2020 for their release. And if we look back at the timescales, 
in how PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were revealed way back in 2013. Well, in theory, we shouldn't have too long to wait for much more comprehensive, concrete information direct from the platform holders. But that's all from me for now, and you all know the score by now, but hey, let's do it anyway. Uh, obviously, liking and indeed subscribing for more analysis like this is the order of the day, and ringing that little bell there informs you whenever a new Digital Foundry video drops. Now, I always promote the DF Patreon, and I'm going to do it again. Pristine quality video downloads are yours for a small contribution that is massively helpful in making this channel viable. You're literally helping myself, John, Tom and Alex in delivering the content we love to make and that we hope you love too. We published just over 270 videos in calendar year 2019 and we do it with just the four of us. No video editing teams, no camera people, nothing. Anyway, let's round this one up then. Um, thanks for making it all the way to the end, as always. And uh, just generally, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.